Hey guys, it's Darwin. If you've been following my channel for a while, most of you know that in 2015, my wife Snuggles and I quit our jobs, we sold our house, sold about 95% of the things that we owned so we could go hike the Appalachian Trail and then live an alternative lifestyle after we got off the trail. This meant living smaller, living more minimalist, living out of a van, um, and then eventually going to work for the National Park Service. So in 2015, we did in fact hike the AT. We were out for four months, and then I was bitten by a tick, contracted ehlichiosis, which is a form of Lyme's disease, and we were forced to get off the trail. Now we did continue to travel after that, but because both Snuggles and I really wanted to finish the trail, we decided to put down some roots here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, work, get an apartment, save up some money so we could return to the trail. In 2016, we did in fact return to the trail. We finished our last 600 miles, but then we started doing other things, other adventures. In October, I went to bike pack the Arizona Trail, which also didn't work out. So we were kind of getting off track from our original plans. While I was hiking through the Grand Canyon in October, I started doing a lot of thinking and thinking about if we didn't do it now, when are we gonna do it? So at the beginning of this year, I decided to put the PCT off until next year. And then Snuggles and I started looking at how we were gonna get back on track of where we left off. So in January, we started looking for a small travel trailer. We knew if we were gonna go work for the national park system, that we needed something a little bit bigger than the van that we could have as home base, but something that we could own to where we wouldn't have to pay rent, uh, be able to hook it up for off-grid living and an alternative lifestyle to where we wouldn't have to pay for a water bill or an electric bill. We started looking at vintage travel trailers. Number one, vintage travel trailers are kind of our style. We like older things like that. So we started looking for the perfect trailer to move into. Now, since our lease is up here in our apartment in August, we knew that we needed to get something soon so we could start doing whatever work we would need to it so we can move into it the first week of August. At the beginning of this month, we found a 1972 Lark travel trailer. It is a 15 foot low line, which is a low model. So it's actually made to fit inside of a garage. And the really interesting thing about it is it was made in Indiana, which is where Snuggles and I are from. So in 1972, it was made in Indiana and then it found itself out here in Albuquerque from traveling across the US. And that's exactly what Snuggles and I did. Now we knew buying a vintage travel trailer was obviously gonna need some work um, because you know they have been sitting around in most people's backyards um, since the 60s or the 70s or you know, what have you, what year it was made. So we knew that it was gonna need work, it was gonna have water damage, but we were willing to get something that we could spend a small amount of money on and, and, and kind of get what we wanted and be able to redo it to where we can make it ours. So as you can see, it has a little bitty kitchenette, which has a stove and a fridge. Um, up front, it has a little booth that also folds down into a bed. And then in the back, it has a couch that goes out into a full-size bed. Um, it has storage down underneath so we can store our gear in it um, and be able to tuck everything nice away. And up on the top here above the bed, it actually has this shelf that folds down and turns into a bunk so someone else can sleep up there. But Snuggles and I wanted something like this that we could fold down and use it as storage to put more of our gear boxes, some of our backpacking gear and um, just, you know, pretty much just use it as storage. It has an awesome little stove in excellent condition that's all propane. Uh, it had a ice box, which we plan on taking out and putting in a newer fridge, a little sink with a pump, um, plenty of storage for our dishes and everything. It even has the original fan, the metal blade fan in it. Um, and then when they built it, it has a power converter in there that runs all the lights from the inside and the fan off of it, but we actually plan on turning it into solar, redoing the whole thing in solar. Um, this booth up here is kind of what we were looking for. It's great that we can sit down and eat a meal on the inside, but also, you know, these pop up and there's storage underneath there 
but it also folds down into a bed so Bowie has a place to kind of snuggle at night. And then some storage overhead. And the last criteria was it had to have some sort of a toilet in there if we're boondocking, which as you can see that's kind of an old school uh, chamber toilet. We plan on taking that out and actually putting a chemical or composting toilet in there. So most of the time we will be using like a park services facilities like their toilet and shower house. But in case we're boondocking um, and we're not plugged up to any type of services or anything, we wanted to make sure that we could live in it off grid. So with having propane, with having solar, and then having the toilet, we're gonna be able to kind of park wherever we want to if we are traveling and still live out of it very comfortably. So like I said, you know, it is an older trailer, so we anticipated it having some water damage. As you can see right here um, behind the sink, there's kind of a hole and it's, it's kind of soft there and brittle. Um, so obviously there's some water damage around the windows. There's also some water damage over here in the corner. Um, and you know, just a handful of spots. And really like out of all the trailers that we looked at, that was pretty common, especially for its year. You know, they just didn't build them to, to last through a whole lot of weather. So, and you know, weather stripping and stuff breaks down over the years. So we knew that stuff was gonna have to be redone and we were okay with that. Again, we picked it up for $1,600. So we plan on putting about $1,400 worth of labor into it. And you know, we're, we're, we're right at $3,000, which we kind of came up with as being a really good budget for us. Uh, on the outside, you can see there's a kind of a trunk which pulls down and has some storage like a spare tire, tools, stuff like that in there. Um, and then on the other side, we kind of have some hookups if we are in a campground. So there is the fresh water dump that goes into the tank. And then there's an in and out for the water for the sink in case we don't want to use the water tank pump. So the hose plugs in there and then water comes out of the other one. And then we have this little storage box over here that we're gonna be putting two marine batteries in there, solar panels on the roof, and then we'll be able to charge those to run all our lights off of. But also in that storage box, we're gonna be putting an on-demand water heater so we can have hot water if we are boondocking and so we can take a shower. So how we actually found and came across the trailer was we started looking for a vintage trailer and found a company in the East Mountains of Albuquerque called Rove Trailers. Uh, it's a guy named Corey that lives over there on the other side of the Sandias, and he actually drives around and buys up old vintage trailers like Airstreams and Cardinals, Shastas and Larks, and either renovates them and sells them, or picks them up and sells them as project trailers to people like Snuggles and I. So two weeks ago, we went over to his house and rescued it from where it was sitting um, thanks to our good buddy Zach who brought his Jeep over and got it out of there. We couldn't tow it with our van because our van doesn't have good enough tow capacity yet. So we'll actually be getting rid of the van and then getting something like a small truck or an Astro van that can actually tow up to 5,000 pounds, which will be you know, pretty much all that we need. The trailer um, weighs in at 1,600 pounds. So if we can get something that tows up to 5,000 pounds, we should, be, we should have more than enough tow capacity to be able to tow the trailer and any of our gear and bikes and stuff that are inside of it. So we had a pretty fun time getting it out of kind of this muddy hole that it was stuck in on his property next to all his other trailers, but we did get it out. We got it back to Albuquerque and it is now parking in our friend's backyard. Um, thanks Alex and Sierra for letting us park it there and letting us do all of our renovations there. Um, they're awesome. You know, we have a little bitty apartment, so we can't really put it where we live. So it's right across town to where we can go over there and kind of work on it whenever we want to. So the first steps in renovating it for us was making sure that we got where we could see the water damage at first, which was right there behind the sink. So our first step was completely taking out all the cabinets, the stove, the fridge, the bed, taking everything off of that wall so then we could go on the outside take all of the aluminum off and see where our water damage was to redo our studs. So we started taking everything out. We detached the stove, the fridge, the counter, um, all of that. We got outside, we took it off and noticed obviously there is water damage kind of throughout the entire wall. So instead of just replacing little bitty pieces here and there, 
we kind of decided to go ahead and start redoing all of it, one uh, new piece of wood at a time. So that's pretty much where we're at now. We have been now working on it for about, uh, we've had it for a week, so we've been working on it for about uh, four days out of this past week, whenever we can, getting over there, replacing some wood, but it's coming along pretty nice. Our plan is to get this one side done, and then we'll move over to the other side, get it done, and we'll just kinda button it up from side to side until the whole thing is renovated. We also took out the main part of the floor because it did have some rot in it, and we did replace that with a new piece of wood, so that'll be good to go as well. And again, like I said, it's definitely gonna take some time, but in the end, I think it's gonna be super worth it, and it, you know, it's an awesome project. I love doing stuff like this. Uh, Snuggles doesn't like it as much as I do, um, but I am a project guy. I love replacing stuff and building stuff. It's kind of my thing, so I'm really jacked to completely restore this thing. So we have from about now until the first week of August to completely renovate the trailer before our lease is up here in the apartment. The first week of August we'll be moving into it and then we'll be staying here in Albuquerque for about a month, a month and a half to save up a little bit of money before we hit the road for more adventure and before we start looking at getting a job for the National Park Service. So I'll be making a lot more videos in the next coming months of our progress and the renovation on the trailer from the beginning all the way till the end. So keep an eye out for those. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I'm posting a lot of new photos lately of the trailer and some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week. Go ahead and like or dislike this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.